As you know, in this uh, COVID-19 coronavirus uh, period that we're in right now, there's a lot of information that is being, being handed out from CDC and various other organizations, state health department, county health department. And so we're taking all that information processing and we are relaying all that information by email or by a, either emails or memos that we're sending out to our people. And so in a lot of that, you know, our daily operation has changed considerably now. Our dispatch, uh, as you already know, is asking a lot of additional questions of people who may be, pre be presenting with symptoms of what could be uh, COVID-19 coronavirus. And they're relaying that information to our responders. And then our responders, in turn, once they uh, arrive at the scene before they make contact with that patient. They'll make that contact with that patient a few feet away within, staying within that six foot social spacing until they ask them some more questions. And they will have already uh, put on their mask and their gown and their uh, gloves, their per personal protective equipment as they're doing that. And then they will put a surgical mask on the patient which prevents uh, any of the germs from the patient coming in contact with them. And then obviously uh, we clean our ambulances between every call, but we're cleaning them and cleaning them and cleaning them. And so they are clean between each patient. Uh, our daily routine around the fire station, we've now closed the fire stations to, uh, to the public. And so the only people that are coming in and out are our firefighters that are coming to work and leaving work. And so even with uh, only our people being in the stations, we are taking extra precautions in our daily cleaning process of the stations and all surfaces, not only in the ambulances, but in the fire engines, uh, surfaces within the station, all are getting wiped multiple times a day with a disinfectant wipe. And so we're just doing a lot to try to prevent the spread of any germs that, that we might come in contact with. And again, that information, we have a daily meeting. Uh, the senior staff in the city does, and so we have a, a daily meeting. Uh, and then we take what information has changed during those time periods and we disperse that information. Another thing that we're doing is we are uh, screening every one of our city employees as they come to work and we're screening them and we're asking them questions about how they feel we're asking them questions about if they have a cough if they have any of the symptoms that might go along with it and then we're assessing their temperature and we're recording that at the uh, beginning of each work shift and then if anybody starts to feel any different through the day then we'll rescreen that person and you know, even though it may not be uh, COVID-19 related, if they're having any symptoms, then, you know, they'll go home and we're encouraging all of our workers, if they don't feel good today, if they have any signs or symptoms of, uh, you know, this, uh, this uh, epidemic that's going around or really, you know, just the flu or anything else to, to stay home. And it's much better to be safe than to come in and infect other people. So it has changed our daily operation considerably. Uh, we have, uh, changed our, our daily routine somewhat in that uh, we would typically be doing, you know, uh, a lot of in-house training, bringing our guys together in, in groups. And so uh, we're keeping them in the stations. We're doing most of our training now uh, by computer. And so they are still training, but they're doing it uh, at a different format than what we would, would customarily be doing this time of the year. And our uh, building inspections, we're doing some critical inspections if need be, but other than our routine inspections, we have stopped doing those uh, for this period of time. And, you know, we're trying to follow what uh, the, the federal government and local government is telling us. Let's try 15 days and see if we can uh, change the curve on uh, the, the spread of this virus. And hopefully when we get to the end of that, we can start to get back to more of a, a normal normalcy in, in you know, our, our personal lives and, and our work lives. The protocol is that Ballad has a number that they can call, which is the Nurse Connect number. And Ballad will ask them some questions that nurse will and see if the questions based on the way they respond to them uh, would negate that they need an ambulance. And if they do, if they have any compromise in, in their breathing, uh, 
and they have an extremely high temperature and things like that, then obviously a 911 call would be initiated and we would respond. But those who are not having any uh, compromise to those systems, then they would encourage them to seek other types of transportation to a treatment facility. And so it may be that they would uh, try to get them to go by their personal vehicle to Bristol uh, Regional Medical Center or maybe um, Johnson City Med Center or Holston Valley, depending on where they're at, what the symptoms are. And obviously, if they're having severe symptoms, uh, then a 911 call would be initiated and we would respond.